How'd you sleep? There's no such thing as good sleep. Not that I know. A lot of nights I have very clear images and flashbacks, nightmares. My nightmare last night. It was similar to other things that happened to me growing up. I don't know if it's just flooding back because of going back through pictures and more switches being hit and more trauma. What was the nightmare last night? My father was... That happens again and again and again. When I was eight years old, my father started... I was physically hurt, scared because I was physically hurt and I can't tell mommy what happened. She'll get mad at me. That's what I was told. With my father, the abuse one day just stopped, just before my 12th birthday. My brother started coming in shortly after I turned 12. And it stops around the time I turned 15 wasn't the same thing that happened with my father. My brother never, no, no, absolutely not. But it was close enough, close enough where there was a pattern. But you did tell your mom about Lee. I did not, not until after I was already a mom. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm starting to get a little frustrated. This has turned into the Casey Anthony story with a smidgen of her dead child. I mean, look, there's not a lot about this kid so far. Maybe it's the director. Maybe it's the way they plan to tell the story. But it is not the most pleasant experience when you're thinking about, I want to know what happened to this kid. There's a provocative statement. We say that we're trying to get you to respond, not by saying something that provokes you, but we're saying something that causes you to want to ask a question or respond to it. When she says, there's no such thing as a good night's sleep. Well, automatically, you want to ask her a question. We use that in elicitation to get other people to give us information. But this is a little awkward. She also shows more anger. She shows more anger at the um, accusation or at answering other people's question than she does about an alleged attack. Now, I'm not going to say whether the attack happened or not. We're going to talk in detail about that. But usually when something like that happens, you're going to be a lot more angry about that than you are about someone else's questions. There's a group of people who get really angry when they're challenged by questions in that. And it's a personality disorder. And you can do your own research, but narcissism and no no person is 100% one or the other. All these personality traits we're looking for, we look at, at on the continuum. So if you've got borderline personality and you plug into other people's needs and they don't respond to you and they don't appreciate you and you're narcissistic, you're going to respond with anger. anger. And the borderline personality causes zero to 60 in personality traits in those emotions. So I think that's why we're starting to see some of this clashing. That would be my approach if I were interrogating somebody is, oh, sweetheart, come on, let me help you out condescending intentionally just to make the person respond. But this alleged attack gets a whole lot more out of her. And then I'm not going to cover all of it because there's a lot here for you guys, but there's some contempt in her face that shows up there. And she bites the inside of her mouth just before she goes to that, that anger and all of that, whatever that is rage. I think that's an adapter, but we're also going to see that show up as a predecessor to when she shows rage or she shows anger later. That would give me an indicator when I'm pushing her buttons that it's working because she bites the inside of her mouth to release nervous energy. As Scott said, this is an adapter. And when we think of an adapter, it's a way to make the unknown known or to take more control. She does a lot of hard eye contact here. And that hard eye contact I typically associate with being concerned about whether she's being perceived as honest or not. So I'll, I'll stop there. And Scott, what do you got? All right, we hear trauma again. Trauma's horrible. And when you really do experience it, and a lot of people have, it's terrible. And I'm sure there was some trauma for her in this situation. But I'm not, I, I think she's using it more as an escape valve. She hits the trauma valve and, and she says, okay, that's, that, I, I excuse that by saying trauma. I'm not saying trauma's bad. I'm not saying you haven't had trauma. It's horrible. I'm not making fun of it or playing it down or anything. I'm just saying, She's not used, she's, the trauma she's talking about, I'm under the impression she didn't experience. She may have experienced some, but not the level she's talking about, to blame murders on somebody else. 
they show when she says um mommy they show a little baby hers a little child this whole this this one-sided view of casey anthony like you were saying earlier greg it's 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 one sided because it shows he says I couldn't tell mommy about this attack and it shows a little baby like the baby would saying you know would would say that and if she's twelve and she's calling her mother mommy that's odd even at eight it's kind of odd I would think I could be wrong I don't know I don't remember what was going on when I was eight this is all poor pitiful me and with and blaming it all on the trauma um, she talks about how she has nightmares every night. These are all prepared stories. She sat down and listed, listed these things out, and she's talked to somebody about it, and they said, here's how you approach this, because her vernacular is changing. When you look at the old videos of her talking, she doesn't use some of these words. She doesn't use these. She doesn't construct her phrases this way. Somebody's helped her do this, and they've rehearsed it. And I know what, we all know what rehearsal for phrases and things look like from working in uh, trials. So we know what that looks like, and we know what it sounds like. When she says, uh, I did not, we see the, or when she says, I did not, we see that we see eye blocking, we hear fading facts, we see that slow head shake, no, her, her cadence speeds up a little bit and she gets loud. This is all odd for what's supposed to be happening here. And I, I'm under the impression, and this is just bad acting. This is bad acting. There's good acting and bad acting. And then you have what I call the hallmark acting, where you where you go in, they make these things fairly inexpensively. And you go over your lines a couple of days. I think I'm right about this, Mark. And they just go down the thing and they can, as they deliver them, they're really not, in some cases, not feeling it or anything. Sometimes they are. Because if you watch the Hallmark channel, I do. I watch a lot. Shout out to the Good Witch. Okay. Chase, what do you got? I don't know anything about the Good Witch. I'll have to look it up, though. Oh, you got to watch it, man. It's awesome. I just think it's interesting uh, to note here that she was comfortable giving vivid detail about the nightmare and then shifted to severity softening and, and concealing language when talking about what happened in real life. So the vivid detail was about a nightmare. And this the, the focus in this clip seems to be driven by a need for forcing a viewpoint. What that viewpoint is, I'll, I'll leave that up to you to interpret. In reality, when somebody asked how someone slept, there's a small percentage of people who will use this question to insert a catastrophic statement like there's no such thing as good sleep. That doesn't exist. Uh, instead of uh, it was fine, how are you? Just being social there. So it's every opportunity to inject some piece of narrative and, and story here. Not that that makes her a liar, per se. Maybe some things in a few minutes will. Uh, but I don't say that makes her a liar. I would say this makes her very unusual, and it makes this interaction uh, a very unusual interaction as well. Mark? Yeah, couldn't agree more, Chase. You know, if 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 I if I meet Chase in the corridor and I say, "Hey, Chase, how how is your how is your sleep?" That's a fatic question. It's a customary question, and his customary reply, even though he knows me pretty well, he's going to go, "Hey, pretty good." And then I might go, "Really?" You know, and then he might go, "Well, actually, you know." But it takes a bit of delving, exactly as you say, Chase. When you ask a fatic question, if somebody then takes that opportunity to go, there is no such thing. As as the concept of which you ask the question, that is confrontation. And so she does that piece of confrontation and takes it to something highly thematic, which is the idea of sleep and there being no sleep, but still alive. So that's almost a, at night, that's a somnambulistic state. It's a sleepwalking state. And the idea of nightmares as well, a horrible situation. This again is the world of surrealism that the 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 kind of dark area of we can see and we can't see and it's kind of confusing and we're asleep and we're we're not asleep in fact it's a little bit shakespearean because there is no sleep anymore sleep has been murdered it's tragic it's tragic when events have happened so that all sleep has been murdered Mm, interesting. We get this collision of feelings around the abuse. We get this collision of facial gestures, lip retraction, hold something back, the biting of the inside of the mouth as well, bottom teeth in anger, uh, eye block with the eyelids and a challenging tone on that. Again, a collision of things that I really wouldn't expect on a theme or an idea or a, an event, which is 
uh, should be and could be and maybe is incredibly horrific, awfully horrific. I wouldn't expect that collision at that point. So I'm worried about that. However, in her favor, we can see her nose goes red. That's hard to fake. That's a tough one. That's a tough one to do. So she's getting real blood running to her real nose at that point. And so that does suggest something of some absolutely real feelings going on there. Though which one of those real feelings? I'm not quite sure which one it is, but there's something real going on there. Though, again, I'm pretty confused as to what's going on here. And I think I'm pretty right to be confused at this point because there's a lot going on, not only in what she's projecting, but what the filmmaker is then projecting of what she's projecting. Uh, I think that's us, isn't it? Are we done? Hey, is it just me or was there an edit before her nose changed? There is, there is an edit. So yep, yeah, there could be some substance in there that causes nose reddening or some other question or some other emotion. Yeah, some other question is what I was suspecting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay, Chase, you won that one. How'd you sleep? There's no such thing as good sleep. Not that I know. A lot of nights I have very clear images and flashbacks, nightmares. my nightmare last night. It was similar to other things that happened to me growing up. I don't know if it's just flooding back because of going back through pictures and more switches being hit and more trauma. What was the nightmare last night? My father was That happens again and again and again. When I was eight years old. My father started to. I was physically hurt. Scared because I was physically hurt and I can't tell mommy what happened. She'll get mad at me. That's what I was told. With my father, the abuse one day just stopped just before my 12th birthday. My brother started coming in shortly after I turned 12. and it stops around the time I turned 15. It wasn't the same thing that happened with my father. My brother never, no, no, absolutely not. But it was close enough, close enough where there was a pattern. But you did tell your mom about Lee. I did not, not until after I was already a mom. If you like this video, Get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.